Nephritic syndrome. Nephritic syndrome can be a confusing topic to understand, so let's try to break it down into some manageable topics. The first is to understand what characterizes nephritic syndrome. Nephritic syndrome's hallmark is red blood cell casts and is often presents with blood and protein in the urinalysis. If you order urinalysis and see blood and protein, you must consider glomerulonephritis or nephritic syndrome in the differential diagnosis. Patients with nephritic syndrome also present with hypertension. This is because of swelling or inflammation of the glomerulus, particularly in the juxtaglomerular apparatus. Edema can also be present in these patients, although it's not a major feature, but can be present. And proteinuria of less than 3.5 grams per 24 hour, often between 1 and 2 grams, uh, opposite of nephrotic syndrome. Another confusing topic often is how to define nephritic syndrome. There are many different terms, and let's talk about those uh, individually. The first is acute glomerulonephritis. This simply means the patient has an active urinalysis with blood and protein, and we are not certain if this is a long-term problem or a short-term problem. There's chronic glomerulonephritis. These are patients who have stable kidney function but have signs and symptoms of glomerulonephritis and need to be evaluated just as any other patient with chronic kidney disease. Rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis is when a patient's kidney function declines in the setting of the diagnosis of glomerulonephritis. The term crescentic glomerulonephritis is a pathologic term, something that is seen on kidney biopsy. So to say that again, in a patient who presents with a rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis, if a kidney biopsy were to be done, one would see crescents. The major causes of crescentic or rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis include Wegener's granulomatosis, TTP, polyarthritis nodosa, and good pastures. Let's break down the causes of the Frick syndrome now as we try to characterize them into two major groups. Let's first individually identify each cause. The first is post-infectious glomerulonephritis, common, commonly seen after streptococcal infection, but can be seen after any infection. The next is subacute bacterial endocarditis, as it activates immune cells to deposit in the kidney, leading to hematuria and proteinuria. Lupus. Lupus presents in many different ways, and nephritic syndrome is a common presentation for active lupus nephritis. This can be measured by the ordering of an ANA. Cryoglobulinemia, often associated with hepatitis C, can be defined by a hepatitis panel and often presents with rash. Other causes include IgA nephropathy, which is the most common cause of nephritic syndrome in the world. TTPHUS, which presents often after diarrheal illness or can present de novo, and its hallmark is low platelets. Wegener's granulomatosis, this is characterized by the presence of C. anca and commonly seen in the elderly who present with uh, systemic illness and active urinalysis. Polaritis nodosa, defined by P. anca and sometimes associated with hepatitis B. Good pasture syndrome, associated with hematuria and hemoptysis, typically seen in the young but often can be seen in the old, typically uh, characterized by anti-GVM antibodies. And Alport syndrome, which is defined by deafness. These two groups can be defined in the following ways. The column on the left are all immune complex diseases and are characterized by low C3 and low C4. The column on the right are more vasculitic in nature and characterized by normal C3 and normal C4. So when one sees a patient with nephritic syndrome, the most important test to, to get is complement. To define whether the patient has low complement or immune complex disease or normal complement and vasculitic disease. This is a very important feature to understand about these illnesses and is the major branch point in diagnostics. In summary, nephritic syndrome is often difficult to diagnose, but if categorized in the following way, it can be easily defined into low complement or normal complement. Its features, cardinal features again are red blood cell casts, hypertension, edemia, edema, and proteinuria of less than 3.5 grams, and that's nephritic syndrome.